Namaskaram. Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the detailed requirements of microbes. I am Dr. Manuvan from PG and Research Department of Microbiology. And what are the common nutrient requirements? In the world, all living organisms need carbon, hydrogen, and a source of electrons for their energy production and their growth. And this nutrients can be divided into two major classes. One is the macro elements, and another one is the micronutrients and micro elements. In the if you take in a hundred graduation scale, ninety five will be for macro elements and a five for a micronutrients because it's needed in a very trace amount. Next slide. And the energy sources, where we are the get, where the microorganisms are getting the energy sources are from a sunlight. That is the organism will be named as a phototroph. And if it's utilizing the energy from chemotroph or a chemical, it's called as a chemotroph. And why we need a nutrition? Because the carbon is with the backbone of all the living organism. Because carbon is necessary for all the organ development and functions. And hydrogen and oxygen are also found in the organic molecules and which is necessary for its respiration process and their further growth. And these electrons play as an energy producers and also it helps in the transport of all the nutrients absorbed from the environment inside the microbial cells. And the cells, types of nutrition, depending on the types of nutrition, the organism can be categorized into a heterotrophs, which uses only the organic sources like carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And we can also termed in another term as an autotrophs which can also live without these organic molecules examples carbon dioxide and these are the neutral types of microorganisms and requirements of nitrogen and phosphorus and sulfur as you as we know in the agricultural field the farmers will be flowing with the field with a nitrogen phosphorus and sodium or calcium salts it's not mean that they are flowing or flowing it for a agriculture plants it's mainly purposefully for the organisms because these organisms will absorb this nitrogen phosphorus and sulfur this element compounds in verse they will promote the plant growth and give the rich yield so that is a major purpose so why we need this nitrogen phosphorus and sulfur is nitrogen is an important uh, molecule such as amino acids and nucleic acids will be synthesized based on the nitrogen composition and phosphorus is an important component of phospholipids which makes the cell wall and the other outer component of the organisms. And the sulfur is found in the amino acids of methionine and cytosine which is helpful for the nucleic acid or DNA replications. And what will be the sources of nitrogen for the microorganisms? Microorganisms can get nitrogen from any type of organic molecules. Organic molecules in the sense it will be a water molecules or some oxygen and nitrogen from the ammonia. While in the farmers will giving the urea, there will be a process called ammonification where the ammonia will liberate the nitrogen and also via nitrate reduction to ammonia using a photoautotropic chemotropes. Next. And sources of phosphorus. This sources of phosphorus is coming inside of the cell because all the genetic material of all living organisms is made up of phosphorus. So this phosphorus contains this phospholipids and proteins and cofactors which is necessary for the growth of respiration of the organism to in bring the nutrition from the outer environment. And the most organisms uses inorganic phosphates. Inorganic phosphates is nothing but it's a uh, decoyed cell matters. And the sources of sulfur. This sulfur is needed for mostly for the protein synthesis. Protein is the necessary compound for the development of cell organelles and inside the cell replica. So it's mainly produced by assimilating the sulfate to sulfur from the atmospheric air. <coughs> and there are some growth factors where it also governs the microorganisms. Not all microorganisms have the necessary enzymes or biochemicals in their concerned environment. So they have to bring on their own necessary factors. So what are the growth factors necessary for the microorganism is? Amino acids which is needed for its protein synthesis. This protein synthesis gives its energy and the growth factors and purine and pyrimidines which needed for the synthesis of its own DNA and for its replication into your new daughter cells which need which need to be transmitted and the vitamins as of cumin it also needs some of the vitamins. Next slide. And these are the practical applications of the uh, growth factors where we have cumin getting from the uh, microbes. These are the vitamin C which is produced by a glucobacter and vitamin B12 by streptomyces. These are all the microorganisms which in reverse gives us the vitamin through our plants. Next, this can uh, our cumin, like our cumin, microbes doesn't have any specific package or a specific digestive system to engulf the food particles because it's fully covered with the cell wall. So 
uh, this microorganisms formates a specific digestive system or a inhalation process for its energy recruitment. The process is called as a transport mechanism. That transport mechanism can be divided into a two process. One is a passive one and another one is an active one. This passive process is a substance where it will be moved from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. Where in this passive process there is no energy recommend for this organism. The second process is an active process. Why it is called as an active process is it actively need any ATP molecules or energy or a binding adjuvant to move its uh, compound and the another major difference between the active and the passive is it is moved from the high, higher concentration, lower concentration to the higher concentration. Next slide. And these are the uptake of nutrients by the cell. Some nutrients enter by the passive diffusion or a simple diffusion. Next. And most nutrients enter by the facilitated diffusion which will be facilitated or poured nutrient and another one is a active transport and another one is a group translocation. And this is the bibliography which I have referred. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video.